Laila Hadari has been fighting to help drug addicts in Afghanistan's capital, Kabul, for 10 years, without government or international funding. She's a lone warrior, a strong and independent woman who knows how to hold her own in a conservative society. But now that international troops are departing after having helped maintain political order for 20 years, Laila Hadari fears for her freedoms. I'm most concerned about the future of Afghan women and children. The post-Taliban generation of Afghanistan has lived in a democracy for the past two decades. They're fond of music, cinema and supermodels, and might even want to pursue careers in those areas. But that goes against the Taliban's beliefs. Laila Hadari is getting ready for the day. She puts on her earrings and sneakers. She's going to Mother Camp, one of the few privately run addiction facilities in Kabul, which she founded. The journey takes her from east to west, straight through the capital. It's still unusual to see a woman driving in Kabul, but Hadari doesn't let others' views trouble her. She passes by Polisokta Bridge, where many drug addicts live. When I saw the bridge for the first time, it was like looking straight into hell. I thought this is what hell looks like. People were lying on the ground like animals. They were dying, and they could have had promising lives, become doctors, maybe. There was another shock in store for Hadari. She hadn't seen her brother for a long time, and found out that he was living under the bridge. He caused our family a lot of grief. He lost all his money. But addiction is a sickness, and you have to accept that. Underneath, my brother was a good man. He's active and dynamic. He just also has this fatal weakness for drugs. Haidari decided to take action. She wanted to help her brother and the many other addicts in Kabul. Almost everyone in the city of four and a half million knows someone whose life has been destroyed by drugs. Mother Camp, her rehabilitation center in Western Kabul. With the coronavirus pandemic, there are currently 15 patients here, less than usual. Ustad Hassan was once an addict himself. For 30 years, he suffered from heroin dependency. But with Hadari's help, he managed to drop the habit. Now he manages the center in her absence. Omid has been here ever since Hadari found him as a young child in a garbage can on the side of the street, most likely abandoned by his family. The facility has been his home ever since, and everyone, including patients, helps take care of him. The patients here also need help and care. Jad was addicted too. You smoked that hard cocaine stuff you call shisha, right? A friend of mine always smoked hashish. He offered it to me and I started. And how did you get addicted to shisha? We couldn't get hashish one night, so we tried shisha. That's how it started. You never say no to anyone, do you? You just take whatever they give you. Patients stay here for about four weeks. Their hair is shaved and their clothes burned because this is the only way to get rid of the lice. There is a lack of costly medicines to ease their withdrawal symptoms, so patients usually have to make do with cold showers. They also have a lot of talks and music sessions, often with a dambora, a traditional string instrument.
Afghanistan is a poor country and one rife with illegal drugs. Many farmers view opium plants as their only chance to escape poverty. More than 80% of the world's heroin is made using opium grown in Afghanistan and the trade rakes in over a billion euros every year. The effects of this are apparent. 38 million people live in Afghanistan and more than 1 in 10 suffer from drug dependence. Still, the business is booming. Laila Haidari is in her early 40s. At the age of 12, she was married to a much older mullah in Iran. And at 13, she gave birth to her first of three children. Many Afghani women have similar stories to tell. But Haidari always had a strong will. She fought to get divorced for years and finally succeeded when she was 21. She cherishes her freedom and is now happy to live alone, even if she misses her children. All three are away studying in Germany, far away from the danger of attacks by religious fanatics. The family stays in touch by phone. How's my beautiful mum? Good, thanks. And you, darling? Good, all good. <laughs> How are your brothers? They're doing well. Mustafa isn't home. Murtaza is, but he just woke up as it's Sunday. You're not working today? No, we have Sundays off. Laila Hadari loves flowers. She's convinced their beauty has a positive impact on people. Every week, she visits Ahmad Nabi, the best florist in town. Every time I buy a flower, I do online research. What characteristics does it have? How should I best take care of it? Does it need much water? And so forth. Every plant is different. So you have to make sure to use the right soil and not overwater it. I'd like a few of these plants, but give me a decent price. How much do these cost? They cost 200 Afghani each. We normally pay 50. Ours cost more. We import them from Iran and they're better quality. Okay. I bought 30 plants, they're for my restaurant. This restaurant may not look like much, but Taj Begum is a special place. The flowers are for those eating at the restaurant and those who work here. All employees at Taj Begum are recovered addicts. The work helps them lead drug-free lives and brings new perspectives. Mohammed Hussein is one of those who managed to turn his life around. He now serves tea, snacks and Afghani specialties. This is a special place for Afghanistan. We can feel pretty safe here. I am very happy to work in this place because here in the restaurant it's just different almost like a family. Hadari started the restaurant with just $250. Its main purpose is to help fund the rehabilitation center Mother Camp. Her plan has proved successful. Taj Begum has become a popular meeting place and one of the few locations where men and women can also meet without being married.
It's also an important venue for women who have experienced domestic violence or who can't afford education. They find a sympathetic ear at the restaurant and practical advice. As soon as Zara comes, I'll give her the tuition money. But first I'd like to introduce another woman. Some take offense to the venue. The restaurant receives threats from extremists, also because it is run by a woman. Hadari has managed to build what she set out to do. But how long will it last? The withdrawal of troops is underway and should be complete within the next few weeks. I'm certain we will lose our freedom. We won't be able to work, study or do business. In many parts of the country, the Taliban has returned to power. And liberal forces have been on the defensive. I'm pretty pessimistic about Afghanistan's future. It seems hopeless. The only ones who can look confidently towards the future are the Taliban, radical Muslims and their adherents, not Afghani women. Women in Afghanistan stand to lose the most if a more extreme political order takes hold in the country again. The future is uncertain. But at least for now, Laila Hadari knows her course. She will continue supporting those with drug addiction in Kabul.